So we're going to start this lesson by looking at strong acids. So there's the general formula of a strong acid. And so if we had a 2 molar, a 0.2 molar solution here of the acid when it started, uh, we have a one to one ratio of kind of everything here in this equation. So if we have 0.2 molar of uh, the strong acid to start with, then we're also going to have 0.2 molar of the uh, hydrogen ions and whatever the uh, negative atom is as well. So that's all the same. Now that can change though. So let's look at another strong acid. Again, we know it's a strong acid because of the straight arrow here, right? And now we've got a three, which means we're putting a three in front. So we have a one to three ratio. So again, if we start with a 0 0.2 molar concentration, our acidic concentration is actually 0 0.6. This is actually the value that you need to use uh, when you take the pH of something. Again, that final one is 0.2 because we have a one-to-one -one ratio of those. So again, if you're going to take the pH of something, you'd actually be using that value. Uh, some people think it's that one. No, it's actually that value there. So here's a question with strong acids. So I want to determine the pH and the pOH of a solution containing a strong acid. So let's determine the pH and pOH of uh, HCl. It's a strong acid, and I actually give you the concentration here. So uh, it's a strong acid. So there is your equation. And there's our log formula. So all we need to simply do is take the negative log of 0 0.015 and you get your answer 1.82. And you've probably learned in previous years that uh, pH and pOH add up to 14. So rearranging your equation to find the pOH, we're simply taking 14 and subtracting 1.82. But there actually is a, a separate way that you wouldn't necessarily have to use for strong acids and strong bases. But when we get to weak acids and weak bases, you would need to uh, do this calculation. Oh, by the way, there's the actual final answer, 12.18. So the second way of doing this would be to take uh, to realize that we have a second formula. Our Kw is equal to our Ka times our Kb. In this case, we're after Kb. So we rearrange our formula and we take our KW value, which is uh, the 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, which is uh, a known, and we're dividing by our concentration there. So we get a KB of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 13, and if you take the negative log of that value, you get the same answer there. So these are, in fact, the same values. So that's just sort of a check. Uh, like I said, for other questions, when we get to weak, this will need to be done. We can't necessarily just do this method here because it's because it's strong. Again, we're getting a full uh, ionization here or dissociation. So when we've got weak, it's going to only be partial. So this number could in fact be different. They won't necessarily add up to 14. So let's look at some percentage ionization of weak acids. Uh, before we calculate the pH of a weak acid, we have to calculate the percent ionization of a weak acid in solution and we need to do this because the weak acid will not only break up into its ions that compose the substance but some of those ions will reconform or recombine to form the original acid so we're only getting a percentage of these things uh, breaking up here and so here is in fact our percent ionization equation our concentration of the ionized acid over our initial concentration of the acid times 100 percent So there again, uh, we have our weak acid. We have our double arrow to indicate it's a weak acid in this case. So we want to write the, uh, the H plus over the HA. And so the HA is in fact, and this is just a rearranged version of it, the HA is the initial concentration of the acid. So chemical analysis indicates that most weak acids ionize much less than 50%, and one common weak acid, ethanoic acid, has a percent ionization of about 1.3 in aqueous solution at SATP. So if we just write the balanced equation for the uh, ethanoic acid, and you can see that we've got the 1.3 above the arrow here. Now, I guess it all depends on the concentration that we're given of the solution. So if we do happen to have a 0.1 molar solution, which is what we're dealing with here, we're simply going to put the 1.3 over 100 and multiply by the 0.1. And so we actually get a very small number here for our acidic concentration uh, for the uh, acidic molecules. So let's calculate a percent ionization for a weak acid. So in this example, we've got propanoic acid, which is a monoprotic acid, just means there's one hydrogen, that one, in fact, that's going to be moving around here. 
Um, and we've given, uh, or I've given you the concentration, the molarity here, 0.1, and we actually have the pH. Now this pH value is key because that's gonna let us calculate our H plus concentration right off the bat using this formula right here. And all we need to do is we need to, need to take our value uh, 2.96, and with your calculator, you get 0 0.0011. So that value we're gonna use to actually go ahead and uh, calculate the percentage. Oh, by the way, it is a, it's a molarity, so moles per liter. So let's calculate the percentage. So there is, in general, our formula. we got to swap it around. Now, we are given the 0 0.11. That's what we just calculated in the previous one. And then this value is going to go right in there. And a quick little multiplication there by 100% gives you a percentage of 1.1. So uh, let's actually go about and kind of flip this around and we're gonna do the pH uh, and uh, we're gonna determine the pH and the Ka of acetic acid. Sure, you can look it up, but we're gonna be able to calculate it here knowing its percentage is 1.3. So there is our equation for acetic acid. It's that hydrogen that gets moved around. And the first thing we'll do is we'll plug our values in here. Now, notice we put our percentage there and our original concentration given in the question right there. And you get 0 0.13 moles per liter. So that's our hydrogen ion concentration. So if you want to take that one, just like we did in the last problem, you can go ahead and figure out the pH. So there's the pH of 1.9. So that that's, crosses off that part of the question. So if we want to go ahead and get the key AKA, we're actually going to need to use an ice chart to do this because there's some change, right? So for our initial concentrations, we've got a molarity of one and we have nothing for the other ones. So this is going to shift to the right. And we've actually been able to determine that we've got a percentage right here. So we know that that's going to be the drop. And uh, we know the other two are going up by X and X. So simply, we're just going to need to do some mathematics here to go ahead and figure out that there is our concentrations. So we subtracted to get our change, and then that would be the value that it's going up by, which would be that one converted. Or not converted, just moved around. So we can do our Ka now that we know all the values. So you can get your calculators out and check that my math is correct. 1.7 times 10 to the minus 4. And so that would be our Ka of the acetic acid. In our final uh, calculation of this video, we've uh so we've got the ph 0 0.01 a solution of ammonium chloride and your first thought is hang on that's not an acid but just bear with me here and i give you a ph of 5.13 so would the ph drop if the concentration was increased to two moles per liter and i do give you the ka stuff here so just a blurb here that for the salt nh4cl nh4 plus is a strong acid since nh4oh is a weak base Cl minus is the base since it's the conjugate of the strong acid and NH4 will set up an equilibrium with water. So it's just some semantics to get us going here. So we'll do the ice chart again. And we've got our initial concentration of 0.1. And we know that it's going to go down and we know that we're going to go up by X. And so there is going to be our change. We're going to take those values and we're going to sub them into the... Um, uh, we've got, well, we've got our X value here, X value here. Now note that we are in, our two is actually what's going to be going in here. And now we want to talk about something called the hundred rule because this minus X is actually causing us a bit of a headache here. This is going to cause us to have a quadratic and a lot more math. So there's something we can actually do to sort of perhaps get rid of that. So to carry out the hundreds rule, we take the initial concentration of the chemical species and divide it by K. If the number is greater than 100, it's generally safe to assume that X is negligible. So let's go about that. Let's see if we can determine um, if it's greater than 100. So to do that, we are going to take our two and divide by the Ka. So that's our initial concentration, divide by the Ka. And we get a gigantic number and so since this number is much larger than 100, the X is insignificant. So back to this, notice that I've dropped that minus X here. That's now gone. And so we can sort of proceed here with the mathematics. We can plug our Ka in now. We can do our cross multiplying. Then you can take the square root of both sides and you can get your X value. 
And so what we've determined is we've actually got our hydrogen ion concentration here. So we can go ahead and take the pH of that solution, 4.5, and now all we're going to do is compare it to the 5.13 here that we were given earlier, and it's only really a slight change up, even though we had a massive increase in our uh, hydrogen ion uh, concentration from 0.1 molar up to 2.0 molar. 